Traffic Cascade by Camel T. Dungey. Camel T. Dungey is an American poet and professor. She has authored works like Traffic Cascade, Smith Bloom, Suck on the Marrow, What to Eat, What to Drink, What to Leave for Poison. She is the editor of Black Nature for Centuries of African American Nature Poetry and is also a co-editor of From the Fish House Poetry Anthology. Camille Dengue's poem Traffic Cascade catalogs the traffic cascade phenomenon from ecology where the removal of a predator changes the lives of all around. The poem discusses the re-emergence of species in the wake of the reintroduction of grey wolves to Yellowstone National Park, United States. Traffic Cascade describes the indirect control that a top predator exerts on species at lower levels. A change at the top of the food chain work their way down to lower trophic levels. Effectively, even the behavior patterns of the prey or lower level beings. In other words, trophic cascade is an ecological phenomenon triggered by the addition or removal of a predator. In the case of uh, Yellowstone National Park, the predator is the grey wolves. So, addition or removal of a predator, which in turn brings about changes in the lives all around. So, as seen in the figure, level 3, the left side of uh, the picture shows you the removal of the predator, causing a rise in the population of the species that it preyed on. That is, in level 2, left side, you can see the increase in number of the uh, uh, species population. And in level 1, again, a decrease in the vegetation. And on the right side, an addition of the predator resulted in the reduction of the prey or reduction in the uh, population of the prey. And again, uh, level 1, you can see an increase in the vegetation or plantation there. So, a notable account of this uh, top-down ecological interaction was observed in uh, Yellowstone National Park in the western United States. That is to say, uh, during 1920s, the local extinction of uh, the grey wolves population through hunting caused an increase in the population of its prey, that is elks or deer resulting in the all being drop in numerous plants eaten by the elks. Plants like uh, willows, uh, berries or grasses etc. disappeared considerably. And in 1995, when wolves were reintroduced, it removed the number of elk uh, population through predation and even brought a change in the behavior patterns of these elk population or these uh, deers. So, uh, Kavli Dungy through her poem Traffic Cascade describes the wide variety of species that were impacted by the arrival of these grey wolves to Yellowstone National Park. First, the deer population decreased, then trees uh, regrew, songbird population increased, so on and so forth. To the poem, after the reintroduction of grey wolves to Yellowstone and as anticipated, the culling of deer, trees grew beyond the deer stunt of the mid-century. So, as anticipated or as expected... The reintroduction of grey wolves to Yellowstone, Yellowstone National Park, caused the reduction in the number of deers, which held the growth of small shrubs and trees nearby the area once inhabited by the deers. Culling, culling means removal or reduction. Deer stunned the area restricted for a particular species or inhabited by a particular species. Deer stunned. In their upreach, songbirds nested 
who scattered seed for underbrush and in that cover weren't snowshoe hair so consequently the trees attracted song birds song birds arrived and they built their nest on tree tops and dropped seeds underneath which brought up shrubs and small trees and beneath or in this safe haven this safe shelter snowshoe hare rabbits okay rabbits seen in uh, or found in north america snowshoe hare made their burrows run uh, were means burrows to make their burrows weasel and water shrew returned also wool and so came soon hawk and falcon bald eagle kestrel and with them hawk shadow falcon shadow so vulnerable species like weasel and water shrew wool increased in strength or increased in number which in turn allured hawks falcons and eagles and kestrel these are birds of prey so these came in search of uh, small uh, small beings like uh, uh, the vole and uh, uh, weasel shrew etc water shrew etc eagle shade and kestrel shade haunted newly buried runnels where deer no longer rummaged cautious as they were now of being surprised by wolves so the runnels runnels the stream the stream flowing in that area the streams covered with the berry bearing trees buried newly buried okay covered with berries trees covered with berries so the runnels covered with berry bearing trees are now hovered by hawks and falcon and kestrels and so this is tormented by the presence of these birds of prey so these no longer came to these runnels they are very cautious and afraid of surprise attacks from wolves too berries brought bare while undergrowth and willows growing now right down to the river brought beavers who dam muskrats came to the dams and tadpoles came to the night song of the fathers of tadpoles so the berries invited beavers the trees invited beavers and beavers are known for the dams they built across the runnels or across the rivers they built uh, these dams with uh, small twigs and branches of uh, plants so with this came the muskrats muskrats came to the dams and also tadpoles young ones of the frogs so the whole night reverberated with the cries of the frogs with water striders the dark gray american dipper bobbed in fresh pools of the river so the presence of american dipper and fish stayed came uh, the, the fishes came and uh, stayed this attracted bears bears who fished also culled deer forms and to the kills caps came vulture and coyote so fish attracted bears and bears in turn killed or removed deer fawns fawn young ones of the deer and to eat the leftover or the corpse of these uh, animals came coyote and vulture long gone in the region until now they disappeared since uh, lack of or for want of food they no longer Ah, came to these uh, areas but now with the abundance of 
uh, food and leftovers the place is now uh, habitat place is now occupied by these vultures and coyote long gone in the region until now and their scat scattered seed their droppings again uh, scattered seeds and more trees brush and berries grew up along the river river that had run straight and so flooded but this dammed compelled to meander is less prone to overrun so the 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 state of the river earlier it was a free flow it ran straight and at times flooded but now since the presence of the beavers or the dams built by the beavers the river is forced to meander forced to bend and so is less prone to overrun so it is no longer flooded don't you tell me this is not the same as my story all this life born from one hungry animal this whole new landscape the course of the river changed i know this i reintroduced myself to myself this time a mother after which nothing was ever the same so as the poem moves to the fag end it takes a personal turn or an eco feministic turn and explores the connection between women and nature it connects the natural phenomena the poem connects the natural phenomena to a human cascade effect that is to say the birth of a child that transforms the environment around it through the poem the poet explores the story of reinvention it presents the resilience of nature and the ability of the landscape to reinvent itself after a change